Welcome to the Heli Academy podcast. I'm Marco Iovizzi. I'm from Italy. Hey guys, this is Eric, Chief Instructor for Hillsborough Heli Academy. I'm with Jared Friend, our General Manager for the Helicopter School. And Jared, what are we doing today? Yeah, today we're going to talk about our examining authority. I think uh, a lot of people know that we got examining authority granted to us from the FAA. And uh, we thought it would just be good to kind of talk about what is it, how is it going to affect our students, and uh, what they need to know. Yeah, you know, this has been kind of a buzz around the school for a long while now. Uh, it was a big process for us to get here. And I know the students have had a lot of questions on it. So I think this is going to be really, really helpful uh, for everybody. And, you know, it's a big moment for the school. It's something that we've been working towards a really long time. And you've you've kind of seen that, uh, Jared, through your tenure here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, since since the very beginning when I was here, we've always wanted examining authority. Uh, unfortunately, the FAA was a little hesitant to give it out. I think they're very protective of it. Even though we are meeting the uh, first time pass rate, which is required, you're required to keep a 90% first time pass rate in order to be eligible for examining authority. But the FAA was just a little bit hesitant that they're kind of releasing some control when they when they give a school examining authority. So they were hesitant. But the FAA came back and they said, yeah, you, your exam or your first time pass rate rather is excellent, stellar. Uh, I think we're in the mid to high 90s, if, if I remember correctly. Um, and uh, and so they went through the process and started looking at uh, looking at us a little bit closer they brought in some some guys from the FAA, some other DPEs to verify the pass rate for us. And uh, long story short, they they thought we were just doing a great job and granted us examining authority for all of the courses that were eligible. So, yeah, yeah, it was a, a probably a year long process for us to get uh, the final approval. I know this started from a 141 audit that we had, and the FAA came in and just wanted to look at all of our our training records and, and our students and graduations. And so they took a look and, you know, it was, we, we've had a really, really good pass rate for a long time. And they finally took a look at it and they said, Hey, we're open to talking about this. And so we actually entered into about a year long process of being audited by our local FISDO. Um, and they, they wanted to see the, basically all of our data. Right. All of our training records, all of our uh, pass rates on both knowledge tests and on practical tests with their examiners. And then it was about a full summer. They wanted to us to prove that those numbers again to them uh, over over a few months. And so basically we entered into like a supervision kind of stage where they brought in. Yeah. Like you said, some more examiners, uh, some more administrators. Uh, I know we had the guys from the local FISDO participating a lot in our in our check rides, and as well as they wanted a, a wide variety of uh, designated pilot examiners, both from the local FISDO and then the uh, nearby FISDO, so that they could basically uh, get as many heads on it uh, and kind of identify those numbers and verify those numbers again. So we we were ultimately really successful uh, in that season. It was it was fun. There was a lot of conversations back and forth. Um, I think the biggest thing here, and like you said, Jared, it's they're releasing a lot of control. You know, DPEs work directly for the local FISDO. And so for a FISDO to kind of give up uh, a lot of that authority and saying, yes, this individual uh, deserves a certificate is is a big deal. And, and they're and they were definitely, you know, right to. Uh, right to come in and, and ask for things and want to work with us. And ultimately, we're, we worked on the relationship that is examined. Yeah. authority, I, And I think that's what it is. You know, these regulations were written a long time ago. Um, and I think that's when we sat down and kind of uh, talked with the local physio and said, this is kind of a relationship between, um, you know, Hillsborough Heli Academy and the FAA. And we just wanted to make sure everyone was on the same page, comfortable with what we're doing. And ultimately they were, they were absolutely thrilled with our training and the quality that we're, that we're putting out there. So we're really excited about that. So um, Jared, why don't, we kind of start with like on 
face value for our students, what is examining an authority? What, what is this thing that we're talking about? Yeah, that's a that's an excellent point. So uh, as a student here, you may be wondering, or, or as a potential future student, you may be wondering, what is examining authority and what do they mean when they say, say that? So normally what would happen is at a 141 school, you would go through the entire curriculum. So we are a 141 school, of course. Um, and you go through the entire curriculum and at the end of the curriculum, you uh, would get a graduation certificate. And that graduation certificate is what you would use in order to apply uh, for your license. And then subsequently, you would go take a check ride with a designated pilot examiner or the FAA. Uh, that would consist of uh, some oral quizzing as well as a practical flight exam. Um, and then the DPE or the FAA examiner would then subsequently give you, hopefully, uh, if you passed, uh, give you the uh, grant you the certificate. Uh, so the the difference with examining authority is we still have that same 141 curriculum, but because we proved that our first time pass rate was good enough, instead of having to go with a designated pilot examiner or the FAA. They say just graduating the course is enough and that you get to apply for your certificate directly based on your graduation of the course. So you're kind of saving the time, saving the effort. And, you know, in the industry right now, DPEs uh, are really, really hard to come by. Oh, yeah. There's some schools uh, that we hear about. Thankfully, we weren't experiencing this, but we uh, we heard of other schools that were experiencing six, eight weeks of wait before the DPE could actually come in and do a check ride for them. Yeah. At about a, at about a minimum, we, we were hearing some horror stories for sure. And, you know, we, we've had our own season and DPs are are busy and it's, and I mean, it's just kind of a, uh, a symptom of the industry being, being so great right now. It's, it's such a great time uh, to become a pilot um, that our DPs were busy. And so I think what we ended up doing was we ended up pulling from, from different, um, different FISDOs, different, uh, you know, we, we had some examiners from Seattle that were here on a regular basis, had a couple from Idaho, a couple from Northern California. So we were pulling in a little bit, but yeah, thankfully we never saw those like six to eight week minimums, uh, for, for examiners. So we were very lucky, um, to do that. Yeah. And it's nice because, as a school, we're large enough, right, that uh, we could actually pull DPEs in from from geographic areas that aren't here because they know when they come in, they'll have a, basically a full load of, of students to do check rides for, right? Exactly. They'd come in and they'd be able to do maybe a week long uh, or, you know, a couple days at least of check rides. Whereas I think some of the smaller schools, maybe that's one of the reasons why they struggled is because they're going to be doing one check ride at a, at a time. Yeah. You know, here with, you know, the, the number of students that we have, the number of check rides that we're doing on an annual basis, there's plenty of work for the DPE. So I think that's one of the things that really helped us. But again, now uh, now that we have examining authority for the majority of our courses, um, now uh, we don't even have to worry about that. Right. So they just they do the final stage check. They get the graduation certificate and they can apply for their their FA certificate right away. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. So exactly what you're saying, Jared, uh, the courses that we have been approved for examining authority are our private, our instrument and our, our CFI or that initial CFI. So there's basically two courses or two times during a student's training where they are going to have to take practical tests. Uh, one of them is for our commercial reduced men's. Um, let's, let's talk about that. Let's just yeah. expand on that a little bit. Um, so we're, the FAA says that we actually, that no one, not just us, that, that no 141 school can get examining authority on a course that has reduced mens. Mm -hmm. uh, why don't you tell the students what that means? Uh, what is a course with reduced mens? So within the 141 environment, and, and this is one of the great benefits of being, uh, being a 141 school and training within the 141 uh, curriculums is it is an approved curriculum and uh, the 141 regulations actually lay out kind of a basis for what the FAA expects to be within those course and there's actually in a lot of different cases for instance the private there's reduction of hours for a 141 course because it's approved compared to a 61 
uh, course, which, you know, just can be your mom and pop kind of flight school. And so like, for instance, for private, you know, if you're in the 61 environment, you need to do 10 hours of solo, whether it's the 141 environment, you have to do five hours. So, but that's not a reduced minimum. That's not right? the reduced minimum. Okay. Correct. Yes. That, so that's just a standard 141 course. Exactly. And I, I, I think it is kind of important because, um, you know, there's already, uh, benefits to being 141. And then for our commercial reduced mins, what we did is we went to the, we went to the FAA and we said, Hey, um, the regulations, uh, in 141 for commercial or, you know, we, we don't want to do this. We, we actually have an idea and we put forth a proposal to have a reduction of hours and qualifications, um, for, uh, for a commercial course. And it fit well with what we were already doing at the school. And so they took a look at it. They said, yes, absolutely. This is, this looks great. This meets all the qualifications. Like we're happy with this. So we basically already have approval to do a reduction of hours with our commercial reduced mints. Yep. So the FA, the funny thing is they kind of consider it, you can't double dip, basically. You can't get uh, approval to do less hours than normal for, for an approved course and get an approval to do uh, examining authority. Um, and that's just kind of how they consider it. It's, uh, you know, yeah, it's you can't double dip, yeah. basically. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, really specifically, uh, the regulations say for 141 commercial course that it has to be 115 hours in order to graduate from a 141 commercial course. Uh, and just like examining authority, you have to have a certain pass rate in order to do reduced mens as well. And so we were able to get our commercial course reduced down to 60 hours as opposed to the, the 115. And again, the reason is, is because it's a very structured, organized course that they know results in good quality pilots. And so they say, uh, normally it's 115, but because, uh, we're doing so well, we can reduce that. And we were able to get, uh, the 60 hour number uh, actually approved. So you can't, we can't have examining authority, uh, for, for that course. Yeah. You know, it's funny that sounds a lot like examining authority. It sounds a lot like that <laughs> relationship. Really is, yeah with the FISDO and kind of proving the quality of the pilots that we're putting out in the industry. Yeah. Yep. That's really cool. So, uh, our private, our instrument, uh, our CFI, and then we have a commercial and instrument, uh, add on, uh, the instrument being part of the IFR course. So it's all kind of included, but those are the courses that we have approved for examining an authority. So individuals that are enrolled in those courses and graduate from those courses, um, is after the check ride, we actually will do an administrative process. They'll meet with our airman certification representative, um, Reiner, and they'll sit down and they will process their, um, 8710, uh, IACRA application and the school will sign off on it. And actually by the time that they leave that meeting, they will be issued a temporary pilot certificate. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And so, I mean, as part of that process, uh, Reiner, the, our airman certification representative, uh, goes in, verifies all the numbers, verifies the course is uh, done properly, um, verifies that everything looks good, and then um, gives them the certificate just like a, just like a DPE would. Absolutely. Um, we can kind of walk through that process a little bit, Jared, if, yeah. uh, if that sounds good with yeah. the, what the students can expect. So, okay, so you're a student. And you've just done your last your last flight with your with your instructor, and your instructor says, "Hey, great job! You're ready. Let's sign you up for for your end of course stage check." Um, and so the paperwork right then and there is actually already going to be started. So myself uh, and Reiner will actually get a, a notification saying that your training records are ready for for an audit. And so we actually look at your training records ahead of time to make sure that everything's done appropriately and that you are are really ready uh, for that end of course stage check. As soon as we say, hey, everything looks great. Good luck. Have fun. Uh, you got this. And then your stage checker will be in touch and schedule a time to have that end of course stage check. So just like normal, it's where we're going to complete uh, that end of course stage check. That end of course stage check will, of course, meet all the requirements um, of the of the ACS um, put out by the FAA, uh, which is everything normal that we've already been doing. 
Uh, so nothing should look significantly different there for examining an authority and, of course, those versus what we've done historically. Let, let me let me uh, just make a note right there. I think, you know, it's it's interesting. Uh, people might ask, oh, OK, so the stage check or the end of course test is uh, is my check ride, right? No. OK, that's that's exactly right. That is that is not the case. Because it's not our end of course that's approved for examining authority. It's our total course. It's it's the culmination of going through our structured course, which in the end results in a stage check or an end of course test, right? Exactly. Uh, but that is not the substitution for a practical exam. That's just the end of our course. What what uh, what gives you the permission to utilize examining authority is the course in its whole. Exactly. And, you know, the end of course stage check, it's it's two purposes. It's verifying that the individual has the adequate knowledge and skill for that specific cert- certificate. But also historically, it's been preparation um, for that practical test. And so it's conducted very much like a traditional check ride. Yeah, almost almost exactly. Exactly. Right? The requirements are the same. The standards are the same. Everything is the same. We are adhering so that when our individuals, when our students pass that end of course we know for certain they got this they yeah. can go ahead and go pass that practical test and i think that's that's really a big reason why we've been so successful uh in our pass rate or first time pass rate is because we we put so much emphasis on our stage checks yeah. we make sure that we go above and beyond to, to so that individual we know is ready for that practical test and ultimately why our students are so successful yeah, so that end of course was like kind of like the the gatekeeper, right? Exactly uh, for the, for the practical exam, and now it's the same thing. It's it's going to be the gatekeeper for the certificate, um, but it's not it's not a substitution for a practical examination, although it will be um, performed exactly in the way that the ACS describes as far as all the things that we need to check. That is not the substitution. It's the course and the graduation from the course that. That makes you that allows you to apply for it. Absolutely, and something I'm really excited about too is uh, with this process. You know, uh, we've gotten a lot of input from uh, even more input from examiners and the FAA. And honestly, I'm really excited right now because I think the uh, the knowledge that has been kind of bestowed to us from the FAA and DPs that we've been talking to about this whole process is, I think our stage checkers are are going to just keep be better and better and better. So yeah. the, this whole process is an investment into uh, an increase of quality, which is one of our company values here is always, always wanting to get better and better and better at what we do. So I'm really, really excited and really happy with, with the structure that we have here. But ultimately, all right, back to the student's uh, example is, okay, so you as a student are successful. You pass, your state checker gives you a high five and says, great work. Um, So the next step in the process is you're going to meet back with your instructor uh, and you're going to continue with that administrative process. Uh, You're going to fill out your IACRA application. Uh, You're going to fill out some uh, of our, what we call our graduation checklist, uh, initiate that administrative process of paperwork. Uh, and basically that's automatic. It lets everybody know in the administrative team that this individual is coming up and they are ready to go. So your ACRA is complete. You finish all the paperwork and basically submitted that to the admin team. Now, uh, once you submit that, we say around three to five business days, you're going to be uh, reached out to by Reiner specifically on uh, a time to meet, a time to get together and finalize that paperwork. So behind the scenes, what kind of happen is uh, the individual, the student is associated uh, by the school and then uh, the chief or assistant chief uh, for that specific course is going to go in and verify approve uh, the course graduation and eligibility for examining an authority. So IACRA is fully completed. Your instructor also is going to go in and recommend uh, you as as a graduate for the course. And then you're going to um, meet with Reiner, uh, our ACR, and you're going to sit down. You're going to final sign all the paperwork. You're going to, you know, talk, uh, talk about uh, he's going to basically check all of your documents, just like you would on a on a regular practical test with a DPE. He's going to check all your documents, your logbook and all that kind of stuff. You're going to do a little bit of signing. And by the end, here you are. Here is your temporary pilot certificate. 
That's great. That's really exciting. Um, I mean, it really should help the the students accelerate a little bit their their training, uh, minimize any delays that might happen, waiting for check rides, waiting waiting for the DPE to to come into town, uh, any of those things. So we're really hopeful that this will help to move the students through. Make a make a more seamless uh, transition from course to course, right? Absolutely, and you know, especially with our with our visa students, those on the F one visa, which are you know working their absolute hardest to stay within the, that fourteen month timeline, right? There's, there's a lot to do within that fourteen months. Yeah. We're, we're just really excited that we we think we can we can cut a lot of wait and time out of here, and and like you said, um, students that are flying more right, are going to progress faster. So yeah. keeping our students active, keeping them in the in the flight training environment, um, I, I yeah, I, I just think it's going to be uh, great for wait times and, and great for, you know, proficiency. Awesome. Well, uh, just wrapping up the, the podcast here, um, if they have any questions about examining authority, what should they do? Absolutely. Um, we have an open door policy, always, right? Um, walk in, walk into one of the, the flight ops offices, walk into my office and, and feel free to ask. And, uh, Reiner, of course, will have a, a wealth of, of knowledge that, that you can, you can, uh, lean on or, and, and Jared yourself. I think we're all here. I think we're all, uh, able to answer those questions, uh, excited about this, this next season of this company's history and, and, and getting such, such an honor from the FAA, um, but yeah, come in, ask any questions anytime. We're always happy to chat. 